Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another episode of 3D Interference. Uh, my name is Sherry Dipband and today I want to talk to you about an extra charge subject for me that many of you have heard me speak about probably at this point. And it's in it's in the 3D interference section of my book, Star Seeds and the Great Awakening. And um it's it's kind of a passion uh subject for me because it really is um energetically charging a lot of people, uh, including myself. And I think that it's important that people are aware of this agenda. Um, and so I want to go through it today and some of the things that, that are inserted within the, the woke agenda and the purpose and kind of where they're going with it and why they are um, pushing it. And so uh, the woke agenda, really what it is, is they're, um, the, the 3D dark players uh, the powers that were uh, they that's breaking down. It's their version of the reality that they want to create to perpetuate uh, divide within the community. And so they are instilling a lot of different um, narratives in order to divide people. So religion is starting to break down in the sense that people are starting to wake up to religion and the um, and the lies within the religion and people are recognizing that it's a control element and it's a way that uh these dark players have created divide all over the world based on these this religious structure so that people um essentially don't you know don't like each other if they don't follow the religion that they're in or they won't allow their families to communicate with people that are not within the same religion <clears throat> and so all the while these, a lot of these religions are are saying the exact same thing and encouraging the same thing and the same values, uh, but at the same time, they're manipulating people into this divide of they're better than others that are not within that. And so that when, when things get that extreme, you know, it's it turns into a cult uh, when it's there's exclusion and they put down anybody that's not within that that. Um, you know, that belief system. So when I think over the last 10 years or so, there's the dark players started to see the uh, religion, um, the newer generations not following the, the religion as well as well as or as efficiently as previous generations. So they had to create other divides within the community. So this woke agenda uh, is a spinoff of the new age movement. So Spirituality is spirituality. It's it's about how we evolve, how we connect to the higher aspect of ourselves, how we recognize that there's more to this reality than just ourselves, how we have more than more than one aspects of ourself. Um, and you know, there really isn't a title for it. It's just enlightenment. It's an, it's our evolution. So when again the dark players to rewind even more, when the dark players started to see uh through the through first the baby boomers who were the first kind of the first line of indigos, um, you know, free love and spirituality became peace and all of this became a, a kind of a, a to them a virus within the the matrix. Uh they of course they combated it with alcohol and drugs. So that that movement kind of shifted um to where it where it started from. Uh, but the this this agenda that they created you know, from this free love movement and, and these um, people coming in and, and wanting to be more in peace, um, they they created the new age, kind of the new age agenda, which was, okay, we see that people are becoming more spiritual or people are more spiritually open or aware. Uh, so how can we combat this? Let's insert um, key players within the new age community so we can control the narrative so they i'm not gonna i won't i won't ever put any names out there i don't want to get in trouble but they inserted big names just think about who these people are who they hang out with where they get their money from and you can figure it out yourself i think most of you already know at this point <clears throat> so you know early 2000s they had a lot of these new age um spokespersons i guess if that's how you say it like these spokespeople that <laughs> i can't speak english um that would like make it big and, and everybody knew who the, their names and they were in every book and, and they had so many books and and so this was the way that they could kind of kind of um control what what direction people went with their spirituality and then they can insert lies um here and there uh, without people realizing uh, so they were being misguided. And then gurus became a big thing. Oh, spirit, everybody has a spiritual guru. All that's doing is taking the power from the priest to the guru now. So 
again, they 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 are able to insert their level of control in varying different ways uh, in order to to keep control over everybody and keep this divide going. Um, and and even within the spiritual community, back when I was much younger, just getting in, involved in it, I could see the hate involved in and one spiritual guru saying something bad about another one. And I thought, well, that they're not, that's not very spiritual of them. Um, and I always found that to be an issue for myself anyways. So I was very careful who I listened to back in the day, but there were some that were, you know, whoppers for me where I was like, wow, uh, I really, I bought all of her books. Uh, literally I had every single one and of certain, um, certain authors. And, and I found out later uh, who they were uh, socially in bed with and energetically in bed with. And I was just appalled. Um, but again, I, I, you know, it's just part of the learning. Um, and that's, they, that's how they get to us. So they see us going in a spiritual direction, and they're going to infiltrate it in any way they can, and then invert the truths of it and, and distort things, but you don't know what things they're distorting, just certain things. Uh, and that, you know, they feel like they have the last laugh and they did for a while, but, but, but not really anymore. So they've always had this ability to insert their narratives or their agendas when they see something good happening. So the new age movement was one, this was a big one. Um, and then now we, we started hearing people say woke, you know, everybody's woke. Yeah. That was the big thing. Like 10 years ago, five years ago, a couple of my friends would always talk about, Oh, you're so woke. And I'm like, what, the, what is woke? Uh, obviously I knew what it was. It's a rhetorical statement that I'm making or question, but um, again, I was like, why is there titles for this? This, this is turning out to be more of a slang term um, that has zero meaning behind it. It's just something people say. And then it sounded very new agey in that aspect where it's more of a narrative or an agenda behind it. And sure enough, it, that's exactly where it went because now we are in 2023 where it's oh, everyone's talking about woke, woke this, woke that. And again, it's exactly what I suspected it to be. It's it's a play on the spiritual movement of being awake. So awake is truly a spiritual evolution. Everybody has their own spiritual journey and their own spiritual timeline. No one is better than anyone else. And people also have lessons to learn uh, as part of their spiritual awakening and people forget that. So some people took the long path on purpose and, and then other spiritual people are, or people who feel that they're spiritual, <clears throat> they look at others in judgment and say, oh, why are they, what's wrong with them? Why are they there? Why are they doing that? What they don't realize is that person chose, probably chose to some degree, maybe we don't know, but many do choose that path. They chose the long route. They wanted to have that experience. They wanted to learn the hard way even sometimes. And we don't even know all the other elements of, of who they've chosen ahead of time to have in their life to teach them those lessons. So there's you never can judge truly because you don't know all of the facts. And even the people living the their life themselves don't even know everything that they've chosen ahead of time. So uh, being awake is just it's, it's an evolutionary process. It's continuously evolving and you're awakening. It could be uh, through periods of your life. I am certainly more awake today at 42 years young uh, with three children and all of the experiences that I've had in comparison to five years ago, 10 years ago, and et cetera. So uh, you, you, your awakeness, if that's a word, <laughs> It, it never, it never ends. It's, it's continuously evolving and transitioning and changing and transmuting and everything. Like it's, it's, it's not a, there's not a finish line. And it certainly isn't in this lifetime for anybody living. Nobody in this lifetime is going to hit the finish line before they, the, before they leave this life. I, I can almost guarantee that because we're all here by choice to either be of service or to help. But to be at the finish line means that after this life that we, what we could, we go and blend in with source again and, and we've accomplished everything um, that our consciousness set out to do, I I doubt it. Uh, and that's not a put down. That's just the reality. I mean, I, um, I think we're all continuously evolving and learning more. And just when we think that we've learned it all, we realize we haven't learned anything. And I think that's a beautiful thing. One of my favorite quotes I saw or memes was that pie chart that said a sliver of it was what you know what you think you know, and then does the rest of it with what you don't know that you don't know. Um, and I resonate with that and I laugh at it because uh, there's so much more and uh, we won't even tap into the majority of that pie graph in this life. 
um, or maybe we have, but in this life, to, due to our consciousness and these bodies and these brains, we can't tap in to that other aspect of those fractals or that wisdom, either by choice or by design. Um, so again, it, it's really hard to determine um, anyone's level of awakeness. Um, it's not a contest. It's not a competition. Uh, certainly, I don't believe that. Uh, and so being awake is just us having more compassion with one another, um, having more unity within the community, building bridges to one another, working together, collaboration, all of that, which is what the Ascension is about. It's about finding our way to each other once again, so that we are not divided by religion, gender, beliefs, spiritual, even spiritual beliefs, even within the spiritual community, you would be surprised how judgmental people can be about what they believe in spiritually. I can't even believe it. Um, and people are judging one another, critiquing one another, comparing each other with themselves to one another about the, what their achievements are, how long they can meditate for, what happens in their meditation versus somebody else. It's absolutely bizarre. Uh, it's not a competition. That is just you being woke, pretending to be awake. You know, spiritual bypassing is, is another um, mechanism of of wokeness uh, because you're you just want to fake it and you want to get to the result that you feel you need to get to, compared probably from other people that you see and you want to be like that. Uh, but I guarantee you don't want to be like me. You don't want to be like someone else or this person. Nobody wants to be or should be like anyone else. They should be authentically themselves. However that looks and however long it takes them to get to whatever it is that they're in search of, it, it can't be compared. There's no such thing. Um, and so uh, being awake is just accepting that, but also accepting that other people are also on their own journey. And so we don't judge. We just coexist. And we may not like eat everybody, and that's okay too. I have a chapter in my first book called "You Are Not for Everyone." And to expand on that, what I mean is that you know everybody has an energetic signature, a blueprint. This the the, the the wisdom. What makes them who they are? What is their resonance? What is their true spirit? Their essence. That's authentically them, but that does not mean that everybody you come in contact with also resonates with that or or understands or vib vibrates with that frequency and that's okay. So two people could be genuinely good people, both high frequency, both doing do-gooders, both in check of their shadow side, whatever. But that doesn't mean that the two have to like each other uh, because for whatever reason, one the vibration that one is giving off just really disrupts the other. Um, for whatever reason, it just could be an, a, an, an alignment thing where it, it's just you're off in resonance and the, you're repelled by the way that person looks or the way they smell or the way they talk or they're just their whole persona. That doesn't mean that they're a bad person. It just means that always it can, but it could also be that they're just, you just aren't compatible. You're, you know, you're two magnets trying to come together and the closer you get, you just put your push farther apart. So there's that aspect as well. You're not for everybody. Not everybody has to like you, you know, find your tribe. And, and so again, the awake part is recognizing that not, not everyone is a part of your tribe, but that doesn't mean that they're the enemy either. So being awake is having many, many spiritual awakenings, grand epiphanies, grand awakenings, and then it just snowballs into the next and the next and the next. Sometimes you could go years. It might take years. Sometimes it's ugly. These spiritual being awake is not a pretty thing. It's not like you wake out of the bed gorgeous with your hair blow dried all the time and you're in its glamorous. There are periods where it's dirty and rough and, and difficult and you just want to hide from, from other humans and be alone for months at a time, years at a time. That's okay because that's that's something you need to do. Then there, there are times where you feel like a butterfly and you just want to fly free and you're, and you're out and you're with humanity and everything is great. And so there's ebbs and flows. There's goods, there's bads, there's everything. Again, all part of the awake process. It's just evolving. It's about uh, transmuting um, negative energy, old contracts, karma, things like that. That's being awake, but just being mindful also of others, you know, speak your mind. That's great. I always tell people, if you have a, a healthy throat chakra, wonderful for you. But if you hurt everybody in your path from speaking your mind, that is not a healthy throat chakra. 
That is you just saying what you feel and not having any mindfulness of how it affects others or how you're saying it. That is also important. That is a level, another level of awake. Yes, you could speak your mind, but do you care or notice how your words affect others? Maybe you need to reevaluate the way you say something and notice that other people have feelings too, and that's also valid. So there's levels of, again, awake, of evolution, levels of consciousness, all meaning the same thing. And we can have epic wins and, and periods of time where we're like, sweet, I'm, I'm rocking this. And then something happens and you're like, man, I'm failing at everything. And I'm, you know, and we all do it and we all have those periods, but we get back up and we say, I'm getting back on track. And then we work through it. And then we continue with being awake because uh, it's a process and it doesn't end or start at any given point. It just continuously shifts, expands, retracts all these things. And it can be uncomfortable. It could be awful. It could be tragic. And then it could be beautiful. And then it could be peaceful. And then it could be nothing and feel just, maybe you feel numb for a little bit. You, we accept all those versions of ourselves because they're all valid and they all have purpose. They all serve a purpose. So imagine if millions of people on the planet are all in that energy trying to do everything I just said. We have to hold the space for each other to experience those um, things as well because that's their that's their journey. So being awake is a, all of those things. Accepting people for who they are, not trying to change them. Even those of you that are awake right now, that truly are awake, spiritually evolved, that you know everything that's going on. No one knows everything, but you know, you know, you're awake to the things that are going on in the world, the negative, also the positive things coming. And you have people in your life that you just can't seem to get through to. You hold the space for them, but your level of awakeness is also determined by how much you understand that they're just not ready for that information or they're just there they for whatever reason they're blocking it because the truth is too much for them to handle that cognitive dissonance is a real thing so the level of awake that you are is going to determine how you respond to those that are not you know i used to get so frustrated when people would walk around with the face diapers like you don't even know how angry i would get i mean my husband would laugh because i would it would infuriate me it actually did bother me to this day in 2023, even in Florida, where they rarely wore, they, not that many people wore them to begin with, are still wearing these masks. They're like the only one in the grocery store. They're the only one in their cars. They're the only ones walking in 95 degree heat, humidity, sun, exercising, wearing one of those things. It, it infuriates me less. It still bothers me. But instead of getting mad at them, I just, I send love to their soul and I say, I hope that you wake up soon. And that's all I do. I just hold the space. I don't judge them. I allow myself to feel what's natural in the moment, which I'm just like you, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, I'm going to be professional, but what I'm really saying is some, some cuss words. And, and then I let that come through because I'm human and I am allowed to feel how I feel authentically, but I don't go broadcasting it to everybody. I don't scream at the person. Maybe I'll come home and tell my husband because I need somebody to vent to. But then it ends there and then I wish them well and that's it. I've had my human experience. I accepted my emotions as valid and then I transmuted that energy and I just let it go and then I wish the person well. And I said, I, I pray for your soul. I hope you wake up soon. Um, that's it. So that's a level of awake. Uh, you, there is never, there is, how do I say this? The level of awake is infinite. So nobody is mastering it in this life. We're just continuously evolving. So it's not something that you can attain like the top level. It just, that's, that's again, you're going back to 3D of competition and saying, I'm the best, I've mastered this thing. So uh, it just, it's continuous, it doesn't stop. So the woke, back to woke. The woke agenda is everything opposite of that. It's extremes. It's again, what can we, what narrative can we implant in the community to cause divide so that people uh, will take one side or the other? Don't take sides. Don't take sides because when you take sides, you're participating, you're consenting, and you're when you're part of it. So I try really hard not to take sides. Of course, in my mind, I've taken sides a lot of the time, um, but I don't. I don't allow that to marinate. I don't share it. I don't make it bigger than it needs to be. And many times, I don't take sides. Actually, to to be clear. 
I recognize that there are sides and I say, gosh, I can't believe those people are taking sides. But then there are certain things within the political structure and others where I'm just like, oh my gosh, I there's a truth that is at least of the light. And then there is a non-truth of the dark. And of course, I'm looking towards the truth. Um, and I feel for those that are buying into the false narrative and the dark agenda. So there are times where, yes, there is a more appropriate side to take. Um, but in many cases, there is not. It's just they want you to choose. And, you know, you like mint ice cream or do you like pistachio ice cream? There's nothing in the middle. And everybody who's not choosing one of those two, I'm being ridiculous with this example on purpose. If anyone doesn't like mint or pistachio, uh, then they're wrong. And, some, you know, and they will push it, push it, even if it makes the most ridiculous, doesn't even make sense. That's the point. The woke agenda is to disconnect, devalue, um, separate, make people angry, make people infuriated, to lie, to manipulate. Uh, so some of these agendas, to to be specific, would be uh, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, defunding the police. Um, and I don't want to trigger anybody by saying um, Black Lives Matter, for example, like that doesn't, like that's, uh, like their lives aren't valuable. Of course their lives are valuable, but don't you see that they are taking something of value that the 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 um, black race has been trying to uh, heal from that trauma, that collective ancestral trauma for many generations. And all they're doing right now in the woke agenda is perpetuating it, igniting it again, and then now causing an extreme by now anybody that's not in the black community or specifically the white, they need to pay as if it is this young man's fault what happened to someone else generations ago? It, it it's apples and oranges, uh, and so they're they are trying their best to divide everybody as, as by opening up old wounds, lying about it, um, manipulating us with the information, and we don't even know where the money is going for a lot of these things. So I talk about this in the book. I'm not going to get too far into it right now, but of course, all lives matter. Um, but when you get into the abortions. And um, these uh, these narratives, there's so much more to it, but all they do is they keep it surface level. That's what they do. They're going to keep it very surface level so that we don't people don't see. They're so they're so focused on the 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 micro of how angry they are about the notion of this narrative that no the a lot of them aren't taking the time to see beyond the like the macro beyond the narrative to see what's actually going on and what the purpose or the intention behind it is um, and what's fueling it. That's what you got to do. So being awake is saying, hold on, this doesn't seem right. This is a little fishy. They're pushing this way too much. Let me see, look, look over here where they don't want me to look so I could figure out what their true intentions are. So, uh, you know, they get the NPCs activated, which I'll talk about in another video. Um, but the... It's all about who they can program and manipulate, who are the really true people anchored in the 3D, who are maybe have entity attachments or and or NPCs. Those are the ones that they're targeting to activate these movements, especially Antifa. A lot of them are, a lot of the Antifa uh, players are NPCs. They're just completely taken over by either 3D interference or some entity attachments or it's the, like a completely different soul that's take uh, entity that's taken over the soul of that person. They're not even there anymore. Um, and, and, or holograms or clones. I mean, that's what NPCs, I know I said, I'll talk about it in another one, but I might as well just bring it up now. You know, there's different variations of NPCs and the, the, those are, those are majority of them right there. So it's kind of a, a, a layered uh, aspect of it. There's lots of, there's more than one definition. And so they get these NPCs or these, uh, really anchored 3D programmed people, the sheeples that we call, a lot of people refer to them as, um, to push these narratives. So Antifa, violence, and Black Lives Matter, violence. Then we got the transgender movement. Again, it's turning into violent now because now I see videos on, I'm, people are sharing videos where these transgenders are set, putting videos about shooting people uh, if they don't let, you know, if, if they're not allowed in the women's bathroom, then they have guns on them and they're going to kill people. Like, it'll be the last thing you ever see or do. Uh, now they're pushing it to violence, gun control, 
all about violence. It's all a manipulation. They're all lies. It's part of the woke agenda to take our guns away from us. See beyond the illusion. There's so much more that you aren't seeing um, that they're focusing on the emotions of everybody. So it's the it's that micro focus on the nitty details that they want you to focus on so you miss everything else. So once you see through the illusion, people, like seriously, you never go back. And that's the beautiful thing. If you see through the illusion once, you're more likely to catch it moving forward where you don't get fooled again. N everything suddenly looks different to you and you don't, you're, you, um, you are not as uh, able to be manipulated as you once were once you see through the, and then you see all the agendas and you're like, oh my gosh, it all, like, it's so obvious. How come everyone else doesn't see it? Um, and so one of the big ones I've been speaking about recently is also in the book, as far as the woke agenda is uh, breaking up the family unit. You know, they're, they're doing this uh, at the root cause of the fundamentals of, of families. Like, and I've talked about this a lot, so I won't get into it too far, but glamorizing divorce, um, pushing away from monogamy through sex magic, which was a video I already did where they tried to break up and disconnect families. So everything is divided. People are sexually promiscuous. Nobody is in a romantic relationship anymore. Less people are getting married. So they're creating less families. Or if they do, they're not together. So they're broken families. And so these children are susceptible to this programming and these agendas because they are able to listen to their teachers and other people in the community that take the place of the roles of their family members uh, because they don't have a foundation or a family. And then they're pushing these gender, the gender confusion, which is another agenda, woke agenda. Uh, then that leads gender confusion, then leads to the extreme of transgender. And now these laws where children can have these change, sex changes really young before they're even mature without parent parental consent. So that's another agenda. That is an agenda within an agenda within an agenda to ultimately get to transhumanism, where we are accepting that we are non-binary. We don't have a sex. We don't, we're not sexual. Uh, we don't have a sex that dominating sex. Uh, we are open to the fact that we can be um, ambiguous and androgynous beings uh, that are not, that are not in families that don't have children, we're completely disconnected from everybody. And we buy into every narrative, we're completely hypnotized, and then insert AI. And now we have this transhumanism agenda. So this woke agenda is big. It's not just this like funny thing that um, we can joke about as, as it's, it's a funny thing. This is a really huge thing that has a lot of components as I've explained, and it's even more complicated than, than how I've explained it. Um, and it one leads to another, one open one opens the door to something else that opens the door to something else, and it leads to what I just said, full control, transhumanism. Uh, nobody has any connection or love or empathy left for one another because they are completely disconnected. All their heart chakra closes up. They're very primal, uh, sexual, beast-like beings. Um, and that's where they're pushing. That's, that's where the woke agenda starts. That's where it continue, how it continues, and the end end game where they control everything. They control the narrative, and there is no more woke agenda. There is no more new age movement. There is no more spirituality. We've already been controlled at that point. It's too late, and so that's 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 what the woke agenda is about. And again, these are generational plans. These beings can come through as many bodies as they want over hundreds of years. So they have patience and they have the time to wait. So nothing is pushed quickly, but it's interesting. I, and I'm in my forties and I look back and I can see over the last 20 years that now as an adult, and I'm like, I look back and I can see clearly the, the things that they've done and how it's shifted dramatically. Um, even in the last 20 years, imagine those that are, you know, much older than me now looking back and what they see. So when you're in it and these young kids, they don't see it because they're living in the moment. And many of those kids had their light disconnected through school and the loose system and programming and they were vulnerable and manipulated and they lost their light and their way and their direction and now they are going into that wokeness and they're buying into it and we're losing these soldiers these star seeds through that so this is an important topic please discuss this with your friends and family your community those that you're able to for those that are resistant don't get, i don't recommend getting into fights or starting arguments or wars this is a peaceful uh, uh, being awake is a peaceful transition. It's just 
spreading awareness and, and holding the space for those that are ready. So find your tribe that you're able to talk to, even if it's through Zoom and it's somebody, you know, thousands of miles away. Uh, you, you, I'm in Florida. You think I have anybody that lives in a radius where I can meet face to face that I could talk about these things with? No, I don't. Uh, so I don't have anyone either. Uh, I just keep a lot of it to myself when I'm out in the community. So I'm not the crazy lady that um, their parents, you know, their other children don't let their other parents don't let their children come play with mine because their mom's crazy. So I try to just be very respectful and I hold the space. And when I find an opportunity or I find somebody that I can see is open, that I'll open up to them. Otherwise, I, I'm very reserved. I keep to myself. I'm not a pushy person. And most people have no idea what I do when they meet me. Um, and I do that on purpose. But there are many people all over the world that I've met that I'm like, God, I wish you lived near me because we could be friends. And all a lot of people are saying that. So unfortunately, if that can't be right now in the physical, you know, there's phone, there's Zoom, there's other ways that we can connect, even through this community right here. I tell you all of how I feel and what I know, and then you comment, and then we share. And this is how we build our own communities of like-mindedness and this is how we help each other. Uh, but this woke agenda, you know, in hindsight, I don't know why I didn't put this video out first, uh, because it's extremely important and it has so many angles, so many levels to it that you wouldn't even believe that is so much deeper than even what I wrote about um, that I don't even have the words to even explain or articulate what I know or how I feel. Um, so I just do my best to explain it. Um, and hope that it causes an awakening within yourself for you that for those of you watching it or an epiphany and it spirals from there. And, you know, we make different choices. We, we stand in our light and we are more empowered and we say, I don't consent and you don't buy into all of these narratives. And when they talk about it, you turn your head the other way and say, okay, what don't they want me to see? Let me look in a different direction and then you'll find your way. You'll find something else even bigger. Um, so I hope this, um, information was helpful for you. Um, and it sparks some conversation and some awakening with, within those watching this, um, again, my agenda or my intention is never to put fear in anybody. It's simply to raise awareness, to awaken those that are ready for this level of awakening, uh, and so much deeper than this. And there's so much more. And I know many of you are aware of how deep it goes. And I think that there's more that we don't even know about. Um, so the level of awareness is, I think, at a trajectory that's probably in cohesive for for all all of us in an, in our highest good. So it can't, it can't be rushed. Uh, but I hope that w my contribution is that I'm able to get these videos out so that it could help in some way. Um, so please share, like the videos, share them. Uh, so you can support me by um, buying the book or sharing the book, letting everybody know if the book was helpful for you, rate it or review it, however that is. Um, and and let me know um, in the comments um, what else you want me to talk about if I'm able to. Um, so I hope this video found you well today. Um, until next time, I'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.